uh, the Stacey Abrams campaign is another great example of that, you know, of how they look at how much infrastructure leadership, you know, and, and how power was shifted through that campaign, even though technically uh, it was a loss, you know, stolen. Uh, we'll return to what, you know, what would have been possible if we had organized more white voters in Georgia later in the call, but uh, to be continued. Um, so, Mo, I want to talk about Trump um, and, and the upcoming presidential election. And if you could talk a little bit about why it's important that leftists and progressives work to defeat Trump. Um, I think for a lot of folks, this may be the first time uh, for folks in surge that they've engaged in an election, an electoral work. And why, I'm just wondering if you could speak to why it's important that we're, that we're working to unseat him. Sure. It's important. It's essential. And it's insufficient. So I want to be clear. It's important and essential to, um, to all of the work that we do and to the survival of the planet. And simply defeating Trump is insufficient, right? And so I often talk about the proximal interventions we need to make and the long-term interventions. And here there's, also, there's often a tension, right? You'll notice that there's often binary tensions. Um, part of the way that we need to decolonize our minds and decolonize our, our imaginations and our strategic imaginations is by not locking ourselves into binaries. Um, and so this is a binary. There's very few binaries that my people have ever been on the winning end of. I often try to, try to challenge all the binary thinking that we have. So, so this is the false binary. Either we focus on elections right now, or we focus on movement building that'll take a generation. Well, in fact, we need to do both. And the Trump example is a perfect example. If we don't defeat Trump, it'll almost ensure that the far ultra right will completely control the federal judiciary. What that means is, let's just say eventually we defeat Trump and we win back Congress. It'll almost be too late because any radical legislation will get knocked down by a ultra far right pro corporate, pro white supremacist federal judiciary. He's already done significant damage, but if he completely retakes the Supreme Court, then our legislative and our electoral strategies will no longer have any impact or very little impact. This is why, number one, we have to defeat Trump to make sure that they don't finish the job of patrolling the Supreme Court and totally transforming the federal judiciary even more than they've done before. That's number one. Number two, we have to defeat Trump because we're in a moment of interlocking existential crises like climate change, like the migratory crisis, like this crisis of capitalism that we're fundamentally experiencing, working class and poor people, like the, the crisis of empire that we're experiencing, we're looking at geopolitical crises taking hold all over the world. These crises, they, don't, they can't wait. There's an urgency. There's an urgency of now. And so the electoral impact of 2020, removing Steve, the, the thinking of Steve Bannon and the practice of, of Steve Miller, uh, Donald Trump and many of his colleagues out of the White House, and then also doing the work to possibly flip the Senate, is a harm mitigation tactic that is necessary for us to turn the corner. Now, on the ballot is three potential paths. The path of Donald Trump, the path of centrist Democrats, is the path of neoliberalism. That's the path that says the problem is Donald Trump. We just need to go back to the good old days of neoliberalism. And the path that, that we're trying to advance the Working Families Party is the path of building a new solidarity, um, a multiracial solidarity that moves us to towards a social democracy. Those are three stark paths. It starts with defeating Donald Trump. And it continues through using that coalition that defeated Donald Trump to do the necessary work um, in order to make sure that we don't go back to neoliberalism, but that we demand a radical democracy, which will mean we'll have to engage in direct action, voting and organizing in order to make that happen. Um, but it only could happen if, if at first we de defeat Donald Trump. It gives us the opportunity to do the other one. Because I guarantee you that right now we're in a electoral united front with liberals, with some never Trump Republicans, all types of people. I guarantee you, if we're successful at de defeating Trump, the, the liberals that want to go back to the good old days of, of safe decorum and neoliberalism, they will turn on left forces. That, that is guaranteed. 
And this is why that the defeat of Trump is, is necessary, but insufficient. Then the second thing we have to do directly after election day is to mobilize our forces um, in, a, in a historically unprecedented way in order to demand um, truly transformative solutions. We can't accept the, the sort of marginal um, solutions that many corporate Democrats and definitely the far right will, will, will say that the Trump, uh, a Trump loss will, they'll suggest that a Trump loss is, is a remedy for that as a solution. What we understand is that a remedy is, is a truly transforming policy.